well, um, yeah, I mean, the last, <clears throat> really the last three years have been just, uh, been having the time of my life and um, just lucky to have great people around us, a great car owner, you know, Barney Visser gives us all the tools we need and, you know, great partners throughout the years to, uh, to continue to build this team up and um, just feel really lucky, you know, I've been on the other side of it before, I've been, you know, teams were struggling and, um, you know, struggled to get in position to win races and, um, you know, have a lot of things kind of going against you and kind of fighting that uphill battle. So it's um, it's amazing to be on this side of it. I, I can't uh, tell you how proud I am of of all the guys on our team and what they've done. And um, I honestly just enjoy every single one of these wins like it's my first because you never know when they're going to come to an end. You never know when you're going to have your last one. You never know what's going to happen next. So just trying to ride the wave of momentum and uh, enjoy it all. And um, my team is just so badass, I can't even explain it. They're amazing. Really lucky to be a part of that. And uh, you know, all our partners last couple of years, I mean, you look at Bass Pro and Johnny Morris and the support that he's given me, you know, throughout my career without guys like him, you know, I wouldn't be here. So, um, you know, this year having five hour and, um, and auto owners and everybody at Toyota and TRD, Salisbury and, and Costa Mesa um, as part of our team, you know, JGR Chassis Shop and all those guys that uh, we work with to, with Toyota, it's, uh, it's just a dream come true to be part of all of it. and. Uh, you know, definitely feeling lucky right now, and hopefully we can continue this wave of momentum and go after another championship. All right. We'll take questions for Martin. If you have one, raise your hand, state your name and affiliation. We'll start up front with Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Um, you know, you guys, and obviously there's more people you're racing against than just two other guys, but it's it's been you and two other guys a good part of the season. To to have that success, success what does it mean to to beat those guys and – and, you know, it seems like one week it's one guy, one week it's another. How is this game playing out? Well, they got five wins, we got four. That's how it's played out so far. So, I mean, um, you know, I think all three of us have great teams. Um, you know, those two guys are great drivers. Obviously, I have a lot of respect for them. And, and um, it's pretty amazing to be a part of this group, honestly. I mean, I think when I was a kid and you you seen Dale and Rusty and, you know, guys like that, Terry Labonte, and, and you had guys that just dominated and won everything, and, and you watching them, it was like, man, that's so cool, you know, they're heroes, and they're, they're such a big deal, and uh, to think that, you know, I'm one of those guys this year, and, and, and I guess last year, too, is just, it's amazing to me, I still pinch myself, um, I still enjoy every win like it's the first, um, and I realize just how lucky I am to be in this position, so, um, you know, I don't know, I don't think a whole lot about uh, about it other than that um just try to fo show up every weekend and, and do my best the best job i can do for my team because i know they're they're unbelievable and they deserve a great driver and they deserve for me to get the job done behind the wheel so they help me be a better driver every single weekend and uh you know i just try to hold up my end so so far it's been going pretty good and hopefully we can keep it up all right additional question Dominic Otto going with the racing experts in ESPN Radio Albuquerque. <clears throat> Next week you have the, the chance to do something for the first time, and that's win back-to-back -back in the Cup Series. What's it going to take for you and your team to do that and get the, get the job done at Loudoun? You know, for us, Loudoun has been an unbelievably good racetrack. We've led so many laps there the last few years, um, have not been able to get the win. I think for us it's just to figure out how do we lead those last 75, 50 or 75. We've always led – the first 200, it seems like, or always been capable of it. It's that last 100 or last 50 that we've struggled to, to be good enough, especially since they started spraying that VHT on the track. So I think um, our mindset and our approach is to try to figure that out and see if we can come up with a game plan this weekend, that'll, this week, that'll work for that. But um, it's, a, it's an unbelievably special track to me because I've been going there for so long and, and spent a lot of my childhood there. And, you know, it's really instrumental in, in my – career as far as getting me to the you know the, the Bush North series and the Bush series and now the Cup series it was the first big track I ever won on and um, the first time I ever went to a race and watched Cup cars run so I mean there's just a lot of history there and uh, it'd be a really big one to win so we're working hard on it um, if I wasn't a dummy last week we'd have two in a row right now but uh, you can't change the past so hopefully next weekend we can get it done all right do we have any questions upstairs Jim Utter from Motorsport.com. Martin, when Barney was in a little earlier, he said uh, something to the effect of five years ago, 
uh, you, you know, we weren't talking about you, but you, you were still a great driver then. At, before your recent string of success at Furniture Row, was it ever hard to believe that you still had the ability that you're able to showcase with them now? Um, that's a tough one to answer. I would say that I always felt like I could get the job done, and I had enough glimpses of really good days or glimpses of greatness that I think it just kept me alive, kept me hungry enough to keep fighting for it. You know, it, um, obviously we won, won a race at DEI my second year in Cup and, and should have won a few more. Um, you know, really at, at MWR we were in position to win, you know, a handful of races, and I felt like, felt like back in those days we were just jinxed. But, you know, more so than that, we just didn't do a lot of the little things right that it took. But, um, you know, we were able to at times take equipment that probably wasn't the best and, and dominate and lead some laps and, and have a shot at wins. You know, I can remember leading a ton of laps at places like Atlanta and Texas and, you know, a late caution spoiling a chance to had us winning because we didn't have fast pit stops, you know. So um, I think through the years there was just, an, for me personally, and I don't know what everybody else thought, I, I know I had some people that probably didn't think I was that good. That's, that's part of this deal. You're only as good as your last race. And, you know, if you're not getting results now, people question your ability. No matter what your accomplishments were, you know, before so um, but I think for me personally I, I I always felt like I could be a good driver be a great driver I never knew I'd get to where I was last year and I, I never really knew I could you know go on a championship run and win you know 17 races in three years um, so it's been that's been amazing uh, it's been humbling it's been fun and um, you know like I said earlier they all still feel like the first and uh, you know I'm gonna keep treating them that way because you never know when it's gonna stop all right, I believe we have one more question upstairs. Yeah, hi, Tom Gresham, Cincinnati Enquirer. Um, somebody mentioned after the race that the way you dominated again here, that the most exciting part of it for you might have been at the end there with the victory burnout, had to, having to jump off the car as it rolled away. Can you describe what, what happened there? Oh, the car was just sitting on the banking in, in second or third gear, and it just started rolling. <clears throat> You know, so uh, I, I kind of felt it start, and I was like, yeah, whatever is going on. I'm going to jump off here, do an interview. Marty, Marty was standing there, so I didn't want to leave him hanging, take off down after the car. and Yeah, just left it in gear, and uh, it's, the front stretch has got enough banking that it just rolled away. All right, we'll come back downstairs. Ghost riding it. <laughs> Remember when you were a kid and you'd ghost ride your bike? <laughs> take off pedaling and ghost ride it off a jump? That's kind of what it was. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, Tim Sullivan, uh, Louisville Courier Journal. Uh, the dominance that you described, the top three guys. What what do you think is the reason that you've been able to achieve, you know, some separation? And do you think that's good for the sport? Yeah, um, you know, great teams, great drivers, um, just doing all the little things right. It takes so many people, um, and so many parts and pieces, and people to to do this job and to be. Um, you know, at the top of this sport, um, just it just shows that across the board how good our teams are. I think, you know, um, you have one or two guys not not doing that job. You have a driver that's not focused. You have just any one of those one of those things in that circle are messed up. You're not going to be able to get results that we're getting. So, just a perfectly old machine. And um, the th three teams seem like they're very close. Um, you know, the, you think about the rules package. You think about the rules we have today and, and how many things are scrutinized by NASCAR and just how difficult it is just to, to get these cars through tech alone. You know, to think three teams have been able to figure it out, you know, consistently how to be better than everybody else is just, uh, it's pretty amazing. You know, is it good for the sport? I don't know. I really don't care. <laughs> My job is to go win races. My job is to win championships. And that's what I'm here to do. So... They keep changing the rules. They keep they can change things all they want, and we're going to try to figure it out. Um, that's just what we do. So, you know, with that being said, you never know when it's going to change. I keep saying it, but I can't tell you just how difficult it is and how much goes into this. And, you know, we have 70 people on our team. I don't know. I'm just guessing, picking a number. If one of those people screws up, we're not winning next weekend. So it just shows, you know, what this uh, what kind of team sport this is and, and how much it takes. And, 
you know, the, the sophistication behind setting these cars up and the simulation and our engineers and the job Cole does and, you know, all those things pulled together. Is, it's just, uh, it's crazy how, how good it's been working and hopefully we can keep it going. All right, go ahead. Mark Story, Lexington Herald Leader. Martin, it seemed like on every pit or every time the cars came out of the pit, somebody took two tires and got it. Did any of those guys worry you? And on any level, was it making it more fun because you at least got to pass? Um, I wouldn't say I was worried. I knew that in 10, 10 laps or so, I'd be able to chase them down. Um, passing them was definitely difficult. Um, but you was able to make it happen each and every time. I think the only time you get worried is if you have maybe, you know, a guy take two and before you pass him, you get another caution and you have a couple more guys take two and you just, you kind of fall back in the order and, and maybe lose that track position. You get back fifth or sixth, it's going to be really, really difficult to get back to the lead. So I think the furthest back we ran all night um, without green flag pit stops was third and, um, you know, was able to re recover from third. But really much further back than that, it would have been difficult. It would have taken a while. You know, not just because it's hard to pass, but just because, you know, it's hard to be that much faster than everybody else to run them down. I mean, it's, um, you know, even as dominant as we were and how, how big of a lead we could, carry, you know, get at the end of the race, we were still only a tenth or two faster than the guy in second. So you look at that, I mean, it's, it's small. It's a small advantage. And you get back too far, then, yeah, you're, you're going to be in bad shape. All right, we'll take Dustin and Gary, and then we're going to come back over. Go ahead. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Martin, we saw you go on this, this run last year about this time. So are there things that you see that your team is doing now that <coughs> reminds you of last year, or is, it th or is this completely different? Because I think people start looking at the comparison and start thinking, here he goes again. Do you, do you see that? <laughs> do you see those things happening? Do you feel that or not? I feel really. I've been saying this for weeks, you know, even when we had a string of bad things happen. I feel really good about our team where we're at. You know, I think right now we have more top fives, more wins than we had last year. Um, that's a really good place to be in. Um, we came here focusing on trying to get more stage points, trying to get more playoff points. Check. That worked out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I feel great about where we're at. Most importantly, I think as a team, I feel like we're getting dialed in more more so like we were last year. Like last year, I feel like we could really show up to the racetracks and be really, really close, not really struggle, um, not really have to throw a lot of things at it for the race, you know, between practice and the race, things like that. And I feel like we're getting there again. You know, I think this weekend we unloaded really strong off the trailer. We only made one qualifying run. It wasn't even a good one. We went out and got the pole because we made good adjustments. So I, I, I do feel like we're getting closer. We're getting more dialed in to what we're doing, to what the car wants with the new rules and things. And that's how I felt like we were last year. So um, to answer your question, yes, I think we're getting there. Um, as we go down this road, we'll see where we're at. We've got some good tracks for us coming up. New Hampshire, Watkins Glen, um, love the road courses. So. Yeah, we'll just see. Uh, it's important to carry momentum through these summer months and get ready for the playoffs, and uh, hopefully we can, we can keep it going. Yeah, for sure it was. You know, I think um, had a good practice, got the pole, you know, won two stages, won the race. I mean, you know, I think the other four polls that we had this year, we struggled to finish in the top five. So for sure it was a more complete weekend. Um, in all facets of, of what you need to do, we were, we were definitely more dialed in. All right, Gary, go ahead. Uh, Gary Graves, Associated Press. Um, you, you've talked about your, your process here in, in terms of, especially a couple of years ago, you felt like you let one go and then you won last year. What about this year's race? What about this track that you kind of discovered maybe even more than those other two races? I actually uh, discovered it two years ago <laughs> and I've just been using it ever since <laughs> I can't tell you what it is yeah yeah did, did it well did it seem to help now with with becoming used to the repave and, and yeah. the reconfiguration did that seem to really help you more this year you know I think actually this year I would say that um, the things I try to make my car do here the things I know that are important for your car to do in practice that are easy to overlook um, probably came into play more so tonight than, than, each, than on any other weekend since they repaved it. Um, I felt like the track changed more from practice to the race this year than any other year we've raced here since the repave. The first run of the race, 
it was amazing how bad my car felt, yet how much better it was than the guys behind me. Um, it was the track changed dramatically from practice. So the things that I tried to get my car to do in practice, the things that we worked on after practice for the race, just played into our hands perfectly. Um, and so that goes just back to, you know, having confidence in your in what you're doing, um, in the things that you're thinking about. And honestly, more than anything, just having confidence and, and making those changes, you know, knowing what to do to fix it and, uh, and running with it. And tonight it worked for us. All right, additional questions? Okay, we'll take one in the back. Aaron Bearden kicking the tires. Um, you were talking earlier, you're still down a win on Kyle and Kevin. You've got four, but you've got three in the last six races and almost one a fourth during that stretch. Do you feel like you guys are maybe starting to gain the upper hand and becoming kind of the de facto team right now? I feel good about where we're at. <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, I don't know what the other guys fought tonight. You know, um, obviously last weekend was, was a totally different situation. You know, half the field was crashed, so. Um, more than half, it's hard to, hard to say. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, we won Pocono and, and felt strong there. And um, you just, you never know what other guys are going through, where they're at, what they're trying. Maybe they've battled a couple things that, that came up and they didn't expect. You just never know where anyone's at. So, um, you know, for us, we just try to focus on what we're doing. And, and, and you know, as I talked to Dustin earlier, um, just feeling more like we're getting dialed into the package and what, what we need to look for and the things that we need to work on is key for us and um, so from that standpoint I feel like we're right there um, and if we can just keep the momentum going sure we can uh, we can definitely feel feel like we have the upper hand with that being said it all changes when the playoffs start and you got to be ready for anything thanks all right any final questions any questions upstairs nope thank you guys all right oh, we'll do one, oh, more. one more okay we'll take one more downstairs and we'll one more close I'll it one out more. <laughs> This is hard hitting. So, Martin, what does a guy do with two giant jukeboxes? <laughs> One's in my basement. I use it all the time. That sucker is Bluetooth. So you can just turn on your phone, Bluetooth, sit down there and jam out and drink beers in your basement by yourself or with your buddies or whatever. It's really cool. Um, you know, I have a shop in Mooresville where I take, every time I win, I take my trophies, the trophy there, and I leave it there for a while. I have a, I have a fan store where I have a lot of merchandise and sell things and you know, folks can come in and take pictures with trophies and kind of check out stuff. Um, so I'll I'll put it there probably, and um, maybe I'll make sure it just plays like all the time. So when people come in, they can check it out. And then after that, I don't know what I'll do with it. Maybe uh, I'd say Cole probably deserves one. So maybe I'll uh, I'll keep it for a while on on display and then send it to Cole's house. I think he deserves it. So I'm gonna go tell him I'm gonna give it to him. <laughs> All right. Well, Martin, congratulations on another win, and we appreciate Thank you spending you some much. time with us tonight. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it.